All right, I want to move on. I want to move on to a slight to a different topic. It relates to politics and to the election, but I want to move on to a different topic. We the 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 quality of the reporting in this state. I I'm, I'm sure you may not want to put it that way. <laughs> But but there was an article a few weeks ago in uh, APRN, the Alaska Public Radio Network, uh, in APRN News, that really got me going. It was it was an article on uh, whether or not oil prices were going to save the state and whether we were going to get back to a balanced budget. And the thrust of the article was we were on our way back to a balanced budget because of oil price uh, increases, and we were within you know moments of of closing the gap, and Walker had saved the state. I'm I'm putting a little bit of a spin on it now, but but clear, but that was sort of the theme of the article. It didn't mention at all the impact and the role that cutting the PFD plays. We we have not balanced the budget, even with oil price increases. We have not balanced the budget if the legislature and a governor pays attention to the PFD statute. The only reason we've gotten close, uh, or we're 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 closer. We're not there yet. But the only reason we're closer is because they've taken about $700 million out of the PFD that otherwise was due Alaskans, otherwise due the Alaska economy through the actions of its citizens, and given it to government and let government spend it. That wasn't mentioned at all uh, in the article. And the article was just a one-source article. All they really did to did was talk to the director of taxation uh, in the Department of Revenue and and use him as the source for the entire article. That really that article sort of sort of crystallized for me uh, the problems I've had with uh, with Alaska reporting political reporting for the past couple of years. They seem to just be buying hook, line, and sinker whatever the administration or whatever the legislature is uh, uh, the majority of the legislature is putting out as their as their press release uh, of the moment. Am I overreacting, or, or is there an issue there? Uh, no, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, the news these days is driven by press release. Um, you know, th- there was a time when news organizations were appalled at that idea, that, uh, you know, they, 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 especially print news organizations, the whole, the whole marketing package was to bring some substance to uh, TV news and to uh, not just rewrite press releases to, you know, explain what's going on instead of, you know, echoing whatever government entity is saying what. Um, and that's just gone away. I mean, you know, the news now is is largely a rewrite of, of press releases. I mean, you know, if, if you just sign up to all the people who provide press releases, you really don't even need the news anymore because all they do is condense that stuff. They don't add much to it. Um, you know, what you're describing is sad but not surprising. I mean... Most reporters, I, I can't think of any offhand who really know the budget well anymore or who really understand economics or business or who could look at a budget and say, you know, here's where the revenue is coming from, you know, and this is how it flows. Well, uh, well, you know, e- even the- better, oil, better oil prices will help us. You know, some more production would help us. And, you know, if oil prices would creep up, we might get there. But you're right. I mean, we're subsidizing the budget with, with, from the fund money. Yeah, and and the problem the problem I Craig Craig I have is that was a single source article. The reporter only went to a single source. When I criticized it, uh, uh, the I got a response on Twitter saying, "Oh, the PFD doesn't count." You know, you know, using the using money from the permanent fund earnings is entirely separate from the PFD. No, it's not. And if they would have asked anybody other than somebody from the administration, they would have heard that. I mean, don't, don't they teach in journalism school you need more than one source for a story? Well, I'm kind of stuck at the, at the, at the how permanent fund money doesn't count part. I mean, is that, is that like some kind of magic money? I mean, you know, that money kind of comes out of the earnings of what we make off the permanent fund. So, you know, if, those, if the economy goes to hell and we stop making those earnings, you know, where's that money going to come from? So... Yeah, you know, I, I guess the, the simple ignorance of economics there hits me before the one source part. I mean, I, I could live with the one source part of the reporter brought some knowledge to the thing, but, you know, it, it's a knowledge problem. I mean, it's, 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 it's not recognizing that this person is, is feeding me their political line and I'm regurgitating it. Um, and that's a problem. Yeah, well, we're going to have to leave it there, Craig. But what what this really drives me to is that's why I read blogs. That's why I read your blog. It's why I read Midnight Sun. It's why I read uh, uh, blogs, because they're doing the better reporting, political reporting, 
these days. Yeah, Craig, and, and it's unfortunate. They're Craig, also doing the better reporting on most things. I mean, it, it is a Craig, very press release driven operation. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. This is Brad Keithley sitting in for Tom Anderson. We've been talking to Craig Medred. When we come back, we'll be off on Alaska fiscal policy.